All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for today's broadcast. My name is Brady Anderson, chairman of NASBAR's Young Professional Network, and we're so excited for today's discussion, retooling for the reboot, preparing for real estate's next normal uh, with our awesome panel of agents. And I will be co-moderating today's discussion along with Heather Rizzo, vice chair of YPN. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to Heather to introduce our panel. Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Um, I just wanted to just thank you for, for taking the time to uh, share your experience and your expertise with our audience. Uh, it means a lot to us at the YPN, uh, so thank you. Uh, without further ado, I just wanna give a little bit of a background to each of you so we know who we're talking to. And I'm gonna start with Kim Shortsley. Uh, Kim has lived her entire life in Lake Forest and has an intimate understanding of the local markets. She has built her legendary reputation on providing the highest standard of integrity and work ethic. Kim is well respected by her colleagues in the industry and is known for her attention to detail and key negotiating skills on behalf of her clients. Kim has established a powerful network of industry experts to help with all of your home buying and selling needs. She understands that buying or selling a home is likely one of the largest financial and emotional decisions people can make in their lifetime. After attending University of Michigan, Kim worked at Leo Burnett on marketing campaigns for Philip Morris, Disney, and many top clients. She knows marketing inside and out and uses this knowledge to sell homes. As a trained interior designer, Kim helps clients turn visions for their houses into reality staging, making color choices, assisting in furniture layout, and organizing are part of what she offers launching your home and her clients onto the market. So thanks for being here, Kim. Thank you, Heather. Next, we have Pam McPherson. Pam specializes in luxury markets in the near north suburbs of Glenview, Gulf, Evanston, Wilmette, Winnetka, and Kenilworth, and has extensive experience with new construction and rehab projects. Prior to specializing in the North Shore market, Pam helped clients and developers buy and sell in various Chicago neighborhoods, neighborhoods such as West Town, Lincoln Park, Lakeview, among others. She started focusing more on the North Shore and she started the Pam McPherson, excuse me, the McPherson Westhoff Group with her city teammate, Haley Westhoff, to make the urban to suburban transition smoother for their buyers and sellers. They offer a variety of concierge services to their clients to assist with any roadblocks in home purchase and sales environments, including decluttering services, staging contractors, and advanced marketing. They have a licensed specialist on their team in almost every neighborhood of the North Shore suburbs, Western suburbs, and Chicago neighborhoods. Pam McPherson, excuse me, McPherson Westhoff Group did over 80 million in sales in 2019 after transitioning to Compass from their previous brokerage and looking to hit 100 million this year. So thank you for being here, Pam. Next, we have John Morrison. Selling real estate since 2003, John Morrison has established himself as a leading expert in the real estate industry with a special specialization in luxury home marketing. In both hot markets, and markets experiencing near record numbers in decreased residential sales, John has used his dynamic professional attitude, experience, and experience to become known as Remax of Barrington's number one sales associate from 2010 through 2013. In 2012, he was ranked number one out of all the Remax agents in Illinois by consistently offering sound industry analysis and professional guidance. In 2014, in August of 2014, John moved his real estate team to the number one brokerage in Chicago at Properties. John has since grown the most successful team in Barrington, outselling their very next competitor, competitor by over double the sales volume. In 2019, he and his team closed over 68 million in volume, was ranked number four in the entire company, and has maintained his number one status in his local market. John and the Morrison Home Team have closed over $725 million in career sales. John's expertise, integrity, and professionalism gains the confidence of his buyers and sellers in today's real estate market. 
his vast knowledge of Barrington's multifaceted market and close attention to detail complements his collaborations with clients, inspired by his exceptional degree of service. Thanks for being here, John. Thank you, Heather. And definitely last but not least, we have Karen Aronson. Karen Aronson became a licensed partner and advisor with Angle & Volkers Chicago at the end of last year after almost 13 years as a manager with a local competitor and over 20 years in the business. She joined Angle & Volkers because the company's culture and values truly align with her, uh, her own, both as a manager and as a real estate advisor. Karen thrives on providing her advisors with superior quality training marketing, technology, and her clients, giving her clients a white glove experience. She is thrilled to be asked to join this special panel and share her insights and experience. So thank you, Karen, for being here. Thank you. So we're going to start it off uh, with the prepared questions that we have, and Brady's going to kick it off for us. Yeah, before we before we take a dive into the questions, I do just want to thank NASBAR's affiliate sponsors for all their support. Our committee is especially thankful for their generosity in supporting uh, YPN in our events. We were planning to host this panel discussion in person, but unfortunately due to COVID-19, uh, we we're unable to do so. But we're excited to be able to broadcast this live on Facebook. Um, so let's get started. Heather and I will be asking the panel a list of questions related to today's topic, and then we will open it up to a Q&A. So if you're watching this on Facebook, Post any of your questions that you'd like to ask the panel in the comment section, and we will address those at the end of this call. So our first question that we have for the panel is what type of counsel are you giving your clients to help navigate the new normal? What I'm doing is I am having my clients kind of think of this new normal as the holiday market, how the market is in November and December where you have actual buyers who are going out in this crazy world right now and need to buy. And the people who, the sellers who are leaving their homes on the market are looking to sell. And so I'm finding that the transactions right now are very legit. It's real people who need to re move real estate. And so that's kind of how I'm guiding them with that. Very interesting. Yeah, it seems like a lot of you know the showings that are going on right now, maybe not as many as normal, but um, the ones that are going on are very serious buyers. Yes. So that's what yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we have our next question here for John. Have you had any sellers request to cancel their listing or buyers request to put their search on hold because of the pandemic? And if so, how are you handling those requests? So we have um, only one listing is officially canceled completely because of COVID. Um, they were actually deciding they were going to be moving to the city and have had second thoughts about going to a heavily dense area after the whole pandemic. So they're going to stay in Barrington and remove their house from the market. And two others out of all of our other listings have just gone temp off the market just because they have young kids at home and they're e-learning and they're very busy. The rest of my sellers have actually asked to remain on the market and asked about the change in our way of going about the transaction showings and everything else, just making sure that we're being very careful, cautious, uh, and wearing the proper PPE and, and everything else. So most everyone that's been on the market has wanted to remain on the market and the showing activity has continued to be rather steady in light of everything. And so obviously with situations like, like that, when they have small children or they're, they're not in a hurry, um, you're supportive of them waiting. There's no reason to hurry up and get on the market. There's no response in that way. So I feel kind of awkward pushing somebody to do something that they don't want to do in light of this pandemic. So if they ask me what I'm seeing right now, I will show them reports. I'll show them showing activity and how many contracts we've seen in the past two weeks and everything else. Um, but it's there, they have to make the ultimate decision on whether or not they want to come off the market. Normally, if they want to come off the market because they haven't had showing in two weeks, we would talk about retooling it. In light of the pandemic, the last thing I would want is a liability. If somebody said, you know, because of this, I want to come off the market for the time being. 
yeah, it's very hands on with each client and everybody feels so differently about everything right now. And I find that you just you speak with that individual person and see, are they feeling OK? What do you want to do? How can we get through this together? And and everybody's so different. Right. Yeah, it seems like a case by case scenario and mm -hmm. you know, seller's discretion on how they want to handle show ins and all that. Um, our next question on the listing agent side of the equation, every, you know, every seller wants to know, is this the right time to list or because of the pandemic, should they wait? And so what, what are you guys telling your sellers? Well, I think we're, we're telling people to go on right now. Um, we, we had some people that weren't ready to list, we're trying to wait and we already had their marketing ready. And um, after seeing the amount of real buyers and especially because uh, for us being in the in the suburbs, we're seeing a real push from, from Chicago to the suburbs right now, just people wanting a little bit more space, a little bit more greenery with, with this and with the possibility of what if this is a repeat, what if this is gonna happen again in the future? So I know I've seen a lot of a lot of my buyers are moving up their timelines. They were maybe going to look next next year, and they're they're moving now because of COVID. So we've actually seen an increase in in real buyers. So therefore, for our sellers, we're saying we need to go on. And of course, if just like John said, it's a case by case situation. You want to make sure each person is is comfortable with that. And so we've put some of ours on and at at different times. Um, we can't, a couple we came off um, just until we really figured this out in the beginning of March when really, you know, a lot of the, the world didn't know what was really going on. So we held off for a little bit and then we did drone videos. You know, Compass has been really helpful with us getting a lot of our, our digital um, marketing going. Um, so we went in and we did drone videos through each home. So we didn't even have to have buyers come through homes and um, we're encouraging them that that can be a first showing. We'll make sure that they've seen a drone first. And so if they actually have to come through with the proper precautions, it's really a second showing. And have you seen inventory levels come down because of this? And, you know, it might be somewhat of an advantage to some sellers, you know, if we're seeing still pretty strong buyer demand and some sellers now wanting to, you know, keep their house on the market. Um, I've seen an increase. I've seen an increase in the in the in the private listing network. So I think a lot of us aggressive agents, um, which I know everyone on this panel is, or we're really searching the the private listing network, searching the top agent network, um, being reaching out to our peers um, that we do a lot of business with, saying, "Look, I got this buyer. What do you have coming on? And will they show if it's proper precautions?" Because I think there's still people still have things in their pockets that are are waiting, even if some of us are putting some on. Okay, next question. Of, awesome. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Karen. I think a lot of us are finding ways to accommodate showings, regardless of what the buyers or sellers want, whether it's drones or the Zoom type showings where we're the ones there and going through, or you know, there's just all different ways we're all trying to accommodate. And 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 to Kim's point, it's so personal to each seller or buyer that you know we're just all being chameleons and making it work based on what they need. Great, thanks. Uh, so the next question here uh, is awesome, especially for our audience with YPN. Um, if you were a brand new agent, what would you do today to get started? <laughs> so um, good question. I think it, it falls true almost any time though, but um, you know, I actually I was thinking about this a lot and there's really three things I think you would do. and and. The number one, all of these exist all the time. These are not having to do with today so much, except that they're even more important because you can't rely on running into people and seeing people and the, and the interpersonal uh, in-person relationships. But you can create uh, virtual engagement and you can create opportunities to get people like this kind of a panel, but it could be around your neighborhood or school issues or community issues or just a Zoom cocktail party, but whatever it is, find ways to create the engagement and be the one initiating it as best you can. Not necessarily around uh, real estate per se, but really get it out there. Um, you know, we we talk about how do you get your information out there and explain that you are in real estate because you're new to it. And um, you know, as you talk to people, engage with them, create real scenarios for that you are giving yourself an opportunity to bring up what you're doing and how things are different for you and what you're doing in this case or how you can be of assistance to them. I think the second is to invest in yourself. 
Uh, and by that, I mean, hire a coach, get yourself out there. Most of us, when we start, the hardest thing we have is to overcome and get out, overcome our own in, internal objections. The, the gremlin that sits on your uh, shoulder and tells you what you shouldn't be doing because you don't want to be aggressive and you don't want to be this or perceived as that. And most people can't get out of their own way. So a coach is what you often need. And whether that's your manager or another person in your office, or you actually go out and hire a coach, most of us need to be pushed to overcome our own internal objections more than the objections we hear out there. We create our own demons in our heads of what we can't do, which leads to the prospecting and asking for business. Never been a time like now that people need us. They really do. Unless decade and a half, they have not necessarily needed us the way they do now. So asking for the business and sharing with them what you can offer is probably one of the best things you can do. And obviously video is one of the best ways to do that right now. So I would say, get it out there, get out of your own way, just do it. Yeah, and that was probably a pretty good time to, you know, really take on coaching and, you know, with all that's going on. Um, so yeah, that's, that's great feedback. Thank you, Karen. Uh, this next question really piggybacks one of your comments earlier, Karen, about virtual showings and um, with all this going on, but do you feel virtual tours and maybe less in-person showings will continue to be a fixture post COVID-19? And how do you think this will change the industry in the future? Oh, I look at it is that it's always been where your first showing is virtual, or whether it be a video, whether it be photos, that buyer is going to look at that first and say, okay, do I really want to go see this house in person? That said, it eliminates a lot of properties, but nothing beats an, your actual agent and you entering the home together, walking through it, you know, seeing how that home feels. I, I, any buy, anybody who buys a house just on a virtual showing just it doesn't make sense to me. I think you have to live in the house. And so I don't, I do think it's it's going to be the same way where it's like it'll eliminate some, but I do think there's a big thing to be said about us with our buyers out there touring and looking at things. Mm -hmm. And I think we also just need to show our importance as agents. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before this started, I got to the point that um, we had our team take down floor plans off uh, of being accessible to uh, buyers, only accessible in additional docs just for agents. So if agents, you know, agents know where to get that so we can kind of show our worth. I don't want a, a buyer because buyers are feeling more and more that they can just go online and see if they like a place or not. Like we need to be able to do our jobs and our job is to be able to sell a home. And with our team, we have an extensive experience on, on construction. We, have, we work with a lot of contractors and rehabs. So we have already brought a contractor through knowing which walls are structural, which ones can be opened up, which, so we need to be able to get the buyer in the, in the door. So we can say, oh, you know, if you hear them say, oh, this room is too small, or actually this can be opened up, or you can put French doors here, or you can do this. So I'm a little bit worried about that virtual aspect. I actually don't, I would hope that most agents don't go overboard. I mean, I'm going overboard with virtual right now, with drone, with FaceTime showings and whatnot. But I do think we need to get back, like like Kim said. I think we we do need to be in the home, and and so we can help sell it the way that we do. Do you all feel that it it helps legitimize showings? You know, I mean, bring in more uh, qualified showings, I guess, because you know we're sending these videos to the buyers ahead of time. Um, yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> I think our I think all of us probably have a, bad, a higher turnover ratio with uh, uh, you know I think people are ready they and they also buyers also don't want to come too many times so they they want to right. be sure and, and so they're not taking advantage of the situation of trying to go back four times you, you people aren't doing that right now so uh, I, it's it's turning over faster and contracts are coming faster which is which is great um, and you know making sure people are qualified before they go out but we'll see if that continues yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, next question here is, uh, how are you staying in touch with your sphere or past clients? And is this different from what you've always done? John, you have any thoughts on that? You know, I feel like we're, we're really good, my team and I, about communicating with our clients at least once a week, anybody that's currently actively on the market. But we've actually increased that quite a bit as this entire pandemic has taken place. Um, Initially, what we did was we went through our database and looked at 
all the business owners. And App Properties was really good about getting ahead of the entire PPP program and the unemployment, all that kind of stuff. So we had all that information. It gave us another reason to go ahead and reach out to them and just explain what is uh, accessible to them in the entire process. Um, and then just explaining to them what's happening, that we're deemed essential, that we're still out there working, we're still selling homes, we're showing homes. A lot of them are actually kind of surprised that uh, how busy we still are. So we just continue to call. Uh, we're ramping up our social media efforts. Uh, we're doing sponsored and boosted ads on a lot of different platforms. Uh, we're doing our weekly newsletter is more driven towards what you can do, kind of fun time with your family uh, ideas, along with the real estate stuff at the bottom, new listing stuff that's gone under contract there that we've closed on recently, but we've refocused it a bit to um, apply to what everyone's going through right now. So you're saying pretty much for say past clients and just your sphere or your circle that may or may not choose to use you, you're using the newsletter and basically ads organic and paid on social media. Are those really the two kind of touch points that you're, that you use for the most part? And, yeah, email and contact via phone and zoom. I think the current active listings need to hear from you more often right now uh, than ever and telling them what exactly what's happening in the market. Awesome, thank you, John. Um, next, is there, what, is, what would you say is the single best thing uh, you think a new agent can do to grow their business during this pandemic and beyond? Karen touched a little bit about this uh, with coaching and all that, but if there's anything you all feel that is, you know, the number one thing a new agent in the business could be doing, you know, what would that be? I think, um, you know, for me, it's just communication, 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 you know, to all of your sphere, um, really focus on your CRM. I never did that before. And with uh, COVID and with Compass's platform, their CRM is unreal. And I, I, you know, bunkered down in March and just really dug into my CRM, really made sure that I was I was tagging, you know, organizing it. And, uh, you know, I think that has been hugely um, you know, now that we're almost to June and I did that in March, the amount of turnover and the amount of contracts that I've seen in the last two weeks, I truly think that had something to do with it, with really pushing my CRM. Um, uh, you know, I think how John mentioned newsletters, I think, I think that's being able to be just a source of a source or just a, a communicator, even if it's not real estate based. I think that's a really, really great way to just kind of get your name out there and kind of start having that name recognition. Um, Compass has this uh, daily newsletter, this email that comes out every day with uh, random facts sometimes, but a lot of um, a lot of market data for that day and what happened overnight and, and an update on COVID and update on that. And I've been taking that, taking pieces of that and making our own newsletter and then addition, you know, adding in some of our listings and whatnot. And then just some fun tips or, or, or jokes of the day in our newsletter and, our, and we do that. Um, our team just sends that out. So it's really informative to be able to get kind of that constant daily information on what's going on in the market right now. I think if you can read and educate yourself on on that on, on, on things like that. So then when you are in a conversation with some, someone, even if you're just taking a walk and you you end up you know bumping into a neighbor down the way and they ask you how the market is right now, you actually have facts. You know, you just don't say, oh, it's really busy. You can actually speak to um, you know, real sales data that's that's happening on that day. So that I think being, you know, the source of the source is important. So you have to educate yourself. Yeah, it's over communicating and just all the time, constantly with everything, data, checking in, all of it. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. Yeah, now more than ever, I mean, with all the uncertainty that's going on, I'm sure everyone's you know, looking for direction and, you know, wondering, we're trying to predict where things are going to go. Um, you know, one of the things that my city teammate did, which I thought was brilliant, um, she was struggling with her kids in the city, you know, because they were on even more of a lockdown um, and us in the suburbs, you know, we we're doing, uh, one of our neighborhoods was doing a window scavenger hunt and it was really fun. So she drove in and you stay in your car and they were picking out things in people's windows, you know, so it gave her daughter something to do. She created one in her neighborhood, and I guess she has an email blast for her whole neighborhood. 
And she sent it out with her, you know, it was nothing to do with real estate. And she said, hey guys, I went to this thing in the suburbs. It was really neat. Why don't, why don't we do this for our neighborhood so our kids have something to do? Everyone put something in their window that we can go and search for. And it was on her email. So her, her base, her signature had her real estate stuff. And then everyone has her contact info. And she said that her, the number of people that then after that, A, loved the idea of the scavenger hunt. And we're really thankful of that. But then reached out to her saying, I saw you, you're a realtor. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? It really helped her grow her business just in her immediate neighborhood. Something that I'm hearing over and over again, too, um, you know, for our listeners is that you're keeping in touch with your sphere in a lot of different ways. Um, you're communicating continuously, um, but sometimes it's on the market and stats, and it's not always about real estate. It's mm -hmm. about connecting to them um, as humans and caring, really caring about our community. So I, I love that. You guys are, you guys are great. Um, Next question here, um, how has COVID-19 impacted your business specifically? And how are you pivoting to continue to create success? So I, everybody here is um, coming at it from a total uh, agent perspective. And I have this slightly different perspective since I'm an agent, but also um, the licensed partner for uh, or one of the licensed partners for Angle and Volkers, which is fairly new to the Chicago land market. So um, timing was interesting with COVID hitting us. Um, and actually what, you know, as far as how it's affected us, what it's done is helped us grow, <laughs> uh, which is probably a strange response to that, but uh, it helped us really um, understand and going back to sort of what Pam said, so many people don't take advantage of really fine tuning their uh, CRM or their tools or understanding all the resources. Um, this gave us the chance to really um, look at all of the amazing resources that Angle and Polkers provides us. Uh, it, it has um, actually enabled us to have lots of classes and opportunities for people to really focus on their CRM. I uh, can't, can't emphasize that enough, Pam. I think it was a great idea that you brought that up because um, that is, when everybody talks about your sphere, it's really your CRM. And for so many people, never stop and pause and really fine tune it and hone it and and take advantage of it and leverage it. Um, and, you know, as Heather just pointed out, it's not all about real estate. You just need to be in touch with them, talking to them. So one of our biggest pivots uh, as a company was that we also, our leadership, um, it, we, so we've always had the digital tools because we're actually a European company that has come to the Americas. So in coming to the Americas, 20 years ago or whatever it was, um, it had to have all the digital in place. So we were very digitally based, but um, not everybody took the time to really explore all those tools. So our pivot has really been um, doubling down on the training and understanding everything that we have and really leveraging it to get ourselves out there and, and get our brand out there as well in the Americas and for us in, the, in Chicago and the North Shore. Awesome. So a flip to one of our prior questions for working with buyers, um, every buyer wants to know, is this a good time to buy or because of all this going on, should they wait it out? And so how are you, how are you guys advising your buyers? Um, so what I've noticed is a big increase in buyers that I have been working with for a while, just, you know, going out here and there to we're ready to buy. And I don't know if it is what we spoke to before, the uncertainty of what fall is going to look like. But right now you have amazing interest rates. You have sellers that are staying on the market because they want to sell. So I think all of that together has made, I've been in multiple offers twice in the last two weeks. I think it's with buy on the buy side, unfortunately. <laughs> but I would say, I think I see a big increase and I'm telling them, you know what, if you do plan on buying in the next few months and you are serious, it is a good time. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. that said, if 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 we come out of this and everybody feels, you know, safer and more confident and we get more of a typical spring market with a lot of inventory, I tell if there are buyers that are dabbling in it, maybe we wait till we see a lot more coming on the market when everybody's more even more secure with COVID and we understand it more. So it's just, again, a personal, everybody's different and we take it case by case. Yeah, with, I mean, mortgage rates now, 30 year fixed, I think I'm hovering right under 
three percent, two point nine right now. It's, it's seems like the perfect time to buy. Uh, are you guys all seeing more people from the city starting to explore the suburbs because mm -hmm. of this, and you know, all the density in the city wanting to get more rural? I guess. Yeah, one hundred percent. I have so many requests for summer rentals up here with pools. Yeah. I like to the point where I might just put a sign on my website that says, sorry. <laughs> I do think that when we're dealing with buyers too, I think us as agents, we also have kind of a social responsibility to make sure that we're, we're you know, like uh, Kim said, you know, making sure that, you know, we're, you know, the ones that are just dabbling, making sure that they understand this is a serious time. I mean, this is, um, like, let's make sure you're serious and let's do some extra homework. And we as agents have to help them do some extra homework before we just go ask people to, um, you know, clean. It's hard to clean your house during COVID. I mean, when you have, I mean, right now I have three practically teenagers sitting at home and my husband's at home. We have three meals a day at home. It is hard to get your home show ready. So I think us as agents, we also have to be respectful on that. We don't want to just be encouraging our buyers to go out if they're not serious and ready and haven't done their homework. I mean, I, I know uh, an agent that will be remain unnamed, you know, last week did that to me and they went came in and out within four minutes, four minutes of a 6,000 square foot home. And I'm like, you did not do your homework. I asked you, are they pre-qualified? Have they seen the video? Have they done this? Are, are they buying? Are they ready to buy now? He said, yep, they're buying this weekend. They've already seen the video. They've seen the pictures. They've seen the drone. They've seen everything in and out in four minutes. And he, the, the owner was like, I clean for three and a half hours. I'm a single dad with three kids and I clean for three and a half hours. They didn't do their homework. So we have to be, as agents, be responsible too. Love that. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, how are you continuing to motivate your team and what would you recommend to help inspire your teammates? John, you wanna? So I feel like the word communication has been beat to death on this conversation, but you know, keeping that open line of communication with your team members is extremely important too. Prior to all of this, we were meeting bi-weekly in person, no matter what was going on, 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. So we've continued to actually do that right now, but just over Zoom. Um, yesterday, we actually had our lender join us and a coach as well uh, to go ahead and, and help lift our spirits a bit about everything. Uh, we had the same goal, Pam, uh, for the year to do 100 million in volume. When we're, we're actually on target, we're about 10% off right now. If we're able to double what we've done halfway through the year, um, and it was it was great the way the coach put it yesterday. She said, you know, she used an analogy. She said, if you were driving your car somewhere and you got a flat tire, you wouldn't pull over and slash the other three, right? In other words, don't give up in your goal. Change that tire and push, right? That spare tire is usually rated for about 50 miles and you can't go over 40 miles an hour. So let's talk about that too. You could probably drive it for 60 or 70 miles. So you're gonna push even harder. And you'll probably push that mile per hour limit as well. So just because we have this setback here, doesn't mean that we have to give up on our goals. Uh, we just have to basically modify and change with them. So um, that was really helpful for everybody. Um, like I said before, we've remained steady like the rest of the panelists here. Sounds like you guys all are too. So we keep looking at the numbers, comparing it to the years past, and we're doing okay. So continual communication and showing everybody what's happening in the market has helped keep spirits up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not looking at it as a problem, but looking at it as, okay, how do we change? Like, what do we do differently? How do we tackle this? Mm -hmm. And moving forward with it has helped. It's all about your mindset and how hard you work at it. I feel not only our industry, but many industries are going to learn how to work more efficiently mm -hmm. in light of all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I also think just being a on a team, I mean, you know, especially for all the, 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 the young agents out there, I would recommend a team. I mean, during any part of being in real estate, having people to, you know, have those Wednesday morning meetings and to have Zoom calls or have a, just a call I mean, I've even had some, a teammate call me and say, I'm at the showing, I don't feel comfortable, you know, uh, and I stay on, on the phone with them. So just in case, you know, they, they have their phone on, um, you know, it just being a part of a team and having people have your back. And, and uh, I think that's huge. And we've, um, you know, we've sometimes had to switch our morning inf inf informative calls. I mean, sometimes it's too much. All, you know, people are getting sick of some of the Zoom calls. 
So sometimes we've switched them to afternoon Thursday Zoom calls with uh, with a drink, and we all just talk about what they did this week. You know, sometimes you have to know as a team leader when when it's time to switch to that. Yeah, Got to make it fun too. Yeah. <laughs> And for those of you as team leaders, do you think, um, you know, since we're not able to meet in person, do you think you'll continue working virtually with your team or when this is all over, but you go back to a normal, uh, you know, meeting in your office and all that? I mean, Zoom is, it's so convenient and it's easier to coordinate things, I, I guess, but um, do you think that'll, that workflow will continue on post pandemic? Zoom has been great, but there's nothing better than meeting people. In person, for I sure. What I think is good with Zoom is that it's gotten a lot more people comfortable with social media, which is so big in our industry. And I think, you know, I'm always a little afraid of being on the camera and stuff, but this is, this just starts, you start getting so used to it because there's so many Zoom meetings. I like that piece of it. And I think it'll be something very blended. I think we won't lose mm -hmm. this entirely because it definitely has its place and it, uh, to John, John's point earlier, efficiencies are pretty great too in terms of we don't have all the travel time and all of that and you can be doing it in your car while you're listening, etc. So there's a lot of efficiencies that come with this, but also to John's point, we all need to be, have, there's nothing that beats being in person. Um, I just think it's going to end up being a very blended look as far as how we continue to stay in touch with everybody and motivate one another and, um, and communicate. Awesome. All great. All great insight. How do you all think prices will be affected because of COVID-19 and what are your projections for the market? Um, you know, I think what we are seeing, um, we, we, are, we always encourage people to price aggressively. Uh, so that's, we're, we're never one to say, okay, you can price up here and then, um, you know, have, leave some room for negotiation. We just don't believe in that. We, we believe, you know, I think buyers right now, even before this, were so tech savvy and, and know, knew a lot about the market. Um, and so they knew when something was priced well. So things will move faster when it's priced well. I do think though, in this environment, people are looking for a COVID discount. 100%. So I think sellers are looking, you know, are, are a little bit more realistic. At least most of my sellers are a little bit more realistic about what's coming. You know, uh, if they have interested buyers right now, they need to be willing to to work with them. Um, and then I think buyers, as Kim said, they've been, we're seeing multiple offers. So I think buyers are also like, okay, we can't jack around. There are a lot of people fleeing the city. I think it's, you know, I think I think we need to be realistic about that and, and buyers need to be, come in aggressively. Yeah, well, it's, it's great to hear that, you know, the market is still very busy. I think, you know, as you're saying, a lot of buyers going into this thought that they could take advantage of this pandemic and, uh, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of price reductions really going on. I mean, the market's still staying pretty normal and, and moving on pretty strong. So that's good to hear. So, um, you know, some of you have already touched on the different tools that you're doing. You're kind of doubling down on drones and, you know, video. Um, but the next question is really maybe if everybody could could pipe in so our viewers could get an idea um, with the virtual showings and the digital marketing tools that are essential during this time, what type of tools specifically are you using on your listings? And more specifically, maybe what are you offering to your sellers that is getting you the listing? Um, new, I'm sure you guys have all been doing these, but some, I guess somewhat new to me um, is the interior drones. Um, that are now starting to um, get out there uh, as a tool. And um, so interior drones is sort of the newest for us. I heard Pam talk about drones and things of that nature. I think that's really important as far as sort of a virtual tour of the home uh, that way, um, being able to get them, get them onto your YouTube channel or onto your website or into your social media is so important um, to create activities for, for showings. Um, and again, virtual showings initially for that first showing, as Kim pointed out, um, and then getting them in the door, because I still think that's so important. Um, the virtual showings through, or the virtual open houses um, by appointment is also another uh, tool that's that seems to be working where you give them a time and people can sign up um, and do a virtual open house that way. Um, it 
going back to, I don't remember who said it, but it, it qualifies them, right? Because they have to commit to a time and being there and getting into this meeting with you. So um, it qualifies them in a way that open houses never qualified people. So again, uh, in, in going back to what I said on the last uh, question, which I think we're going to go forward with a blended look of this because mm -hmm. it does, there are pieces of this that have come out I think w way better and there's others that are obviously completely inconvenient. <laughs> so um, I, I think it'll be a blend going forward tools wise. Anybody else want to share? Anybody doing the 3D walkthrough? Do you think it's redundant to do a 3D walkthrough and a drone and a professional uh, video and a virtual tour where you're walking through the house? I mean, what do you think? Yes, <laughs> I, I think it's, it, at some point, as Pam said earlier, um, we have to show our value and we have to make them want to, uh, you can't give them everything or they have no reason to come and see it and to need us if you hand them everything. And so at some point, I think it's overkill. Um, obviously, right now we have to at least do enough to get them to want to cross the threshold, which is the whole purpose. But um, at some point, it's overkill. I personally get nauseous at looking at the Matterports. <laughs> I, I can't stand them. But um, but I think it's important to get through the house somehow virtually. Yeah, I agree with uh, Pam too, leaving a little something out to generate that phone call because there's no way to overcome an objection if somebody objects to it online. So if there's something that they have to call you about to inquire, and then you learn about the objection, you have the opportunity to overcome it. So, exactly. And those, those first showings should be more about, those virtual showings should be more about function. So you don't want a first floor master. Okay, we're crossing that up the list. And that's, that's what I like to cross off in that first showing. Instead of like, well, how does the house feel or look? That's when we take over and bring them in and show them, does a wall, can a wall be removed? things like that. Hey, Karen, you mentioned virtual open houses. Are you, are you seeing a lot of activity with that, with people tuning into those type, you know, broadcasts? And because uh, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of creative ways you all are marketing your listing and quickly shifting with all this, you know, the pandemic going on. Um, but I'm just curious, are, you know, a lot of people, you know, tuning in virtually for those? I mean, it's hard to gauge whether it's a lot or not, considering we never did them before, so we don't have a direct comparison. It's not like some of the new listings that hit the market and we have 22 people walk through the door. Um, but yes, it, it's um, they are working and uh, it our, our, the Engel and Volker's websites for our listings have a, a space for the virtual uh, open house as well, which is great. So um, it, it was designed that way. So uh, it, it's also something that is also European, <laughs> something that they do. It's better than no open house at all. Um, our next question is, do you think we will see some pent up demand in the third and fourth quarter of this year? Like I said before, I think it's going to be a wait and see if we don't know, are we getting this round two? Or are we not, you know, but if everything goes well and the answer to that is no, and we all feel safe, I, I kind of think we're going to head into like a spring market in the fall, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think so too. I, we're usually very dead in August and I'm, I, I think that we're going to be re still really busy. I think it's going to be a pretty steady stream. I completely agree. And I think a lot of people aren't going to be able to get away in August either, right? So I, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be some of that that rental and all of that demand as well. But I, I completely agree. I see it going straight into March or straight into fall. Yeah. Uh, so I've also, oh, sorry. I was just going to say that I, I've also considered, we don't have like one rental specialist on our team. And I think we're looking at uh, adding a rental specialist because we've seen rentals. So many people want to test things out a little bit or, or short term is you people. And even some of our, our sellers are like, you know what, if someone's really w willing to spend that much on a short term rental, I'll rent my place out for six months um, just for investment. Um, and so I think, you know, well, uh, I think rentals will pick up too. Um, and so I think we'll all see that as a little bit more of a pickup on our teams. And awesome. we would all love it to pick up. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> good news all around. Good news uh, okay. all around. 
what uh, what lead generation methods are getting you the best results right now? And uh, is that a change uh, from what you were doing before? Um, John, I know you mentioned you're doing the Facebook ads and the social media. Um, as far as lead generation, you just kind of keeping it, keep it going the way you've been doing it, or did you shift it at all because of uh, COVID? We haven't shifted it much because the majority of our business, probably like all the rest of the panelists here, is uh, repeat and referral. So just by keeping in touch with our sphere and uh, giving back to our community, really, not looking for business, but trying to uh, support the community during this time period has actually turned around to give us some business. So for example, my wife and I are part of a group called the Shepherd Circle. Um, it's another uh, eight couples where we do a big annual event to raise money for the local hospital here at Good Shepherd. Um, it's part of the advocate program. And in light of everything that's happening right now, we started doing um, uh, meals for all the first responders and nurses and doctors and everyone at the hospital for about six weeks. Um, so every day there was lunch and dinner being delivered to the hospital. And in turn, we were actually able to support a lot of the local restaurants too. So we're taking donations from local people in the community, paying for the food at the restaurant so they can keep their people employed. And they were giving free meals to uh, the hospital. So, you know, we did that to go ahead and help support everybody in this time, not looking for business, uh, but it has grown to go ahead and, and turn around and get us some, some business in turn. So uh, just keeping in touch with clients. I mean, even for new agents, you know, I'd be sitting there right now and taking the next couple of weeks and writing down every single person that I know, family members, business owners, local and everything else and putting together a database. That's what I think, you know, new agents should be doing right now and take advantage of this time frame. There's so many things all of us want to do in our business and how many of us on this Zoom call say, when it slows down, I'll get to it. Because mm -hmm. we never have time. Right. And now we have this gap in time where we could actually jump in and take advantage of that. So, uh, you know, ours is always repeat and referral. We do print ads, we do the, you know, the social media stuff, but every year when we look at our transactions at the end of the year, we say, where did it come from? Most of it is all repeat and referral. So really focusing on our database is, is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I, I like the idea too. I mean, just like everybody said, being part of the community, I know Karen, you had mentioned a great idea, I think is really cool. If you can just uh, get the cojones to do it is put together like a neighborhood Zoom cocktail hour or a group that maybe you're, you know, you're with in your sphere, however, whatever you're, if you coach soccer or whatever it is you're doing. So um, yeah, I think it does always come back, come back to that. So thank you for that, both of you. And have any of you implemented any new self-development routines during this time to keep a strong mindset? You know, this COVID-19 has forced us all to adapt to this new normal. Um, and it seems like it would be easy for, you know, to push some people out of their normal routine, but what are you doing to help, you know, keep in the normal flow of business and, you know, you know, work day and all that? Yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned a little bit of it before, just CRM. I mean, I, honestly, I did not have a good organized CRM before. Um, and so I am so thankful that I was able to take this time and, and really focus on that. And because then all of the other things that we do are being able to be fed by that. So are the newsletter that we started doing, um, you know, we would do that once in a while, but now because there's almost new information every day that we're getting with COVID and what's going on with everything, we're, you know, we're sending out more often, our, our newsletters more often. So because our CRM is built, it helps us do that to do those with, with those market savvy, you know, uh, newsletters. And then just some of our touches, you know, um, in one of those morning emails, um, the, uh, some uh, Compass a California agent had um, made this song with her family. And this, it was just the most amazing, beautiful song that ended up being like one of those compilations, a Zoom call compilation of, of songs. So I copied that. And I copied that link and I sent it to every single client. I mean, it, it took me all day. It was one of those rainy days. And I sat there and I started a conversation. I'm like, you know what? The, it was right before that news came out that it, you know we weren't going to open in May too. You know, it was right. It was like it was a gloomy day. And then they were like, okay, May's closed too. And I just said, thank you, you guys. Here's a song of hope. You know that I, I wanted to send out to you. Hope you're doing well. 
and made it something, you know, I, I do a lot of communication via text. It's probably not very time efficient, but I, I it helps me. Um, and I think it helps my ADD <laughs> to be able to really, yeah, I'm always there and I always have my phone and I can always reach out to someone when I see, think of something. But sending that text and that link of just that song, and then they sent it on to their friends and family and said, my realtor just sent this off to me. And then they wrote back to me and said, how are you doing? How are you doing all this? It just, it started a conversation that's still going on, you know, with, with clients that I sold to four years ago. So just some some sort of like song of hope or something that you can do to reach out and check in and just, you know, being able to do that with your clients is such an important part. So I never would have been, I would never would have had the time to do that um, if it wasn't during this time. So it was, it was, it was a nice time to be able to take advantage of that. Very cool. Is there a favorite type of CRM you like out there or? Um, I use the internal um, Compass CRM. So, um, uh, you know, it's it's super interactive, and we can um, it, we can make it really uh, individualized for for people, and we have different options within it that allow us to send you know updated C CMAs in on their particular property that I've already done. You know, it helps me do that it, right within their their bracket on my client page for them. Um, and so, and now I'm starting to enter in my client gifts for closing gifts in there. Cause now, you know, I, I'm seeing repeat business now, cause this is, I I'm on my fifth year of being in the business. And so we're seeing a lot of repeat business now, um, coming through. And so I'm like, shoot, what did I give them the first time around? I can't remember what I gave them the first time around. So I, I thank you. Thankfully we're keeping it all in the, the new CRM there. Um, cause there's access points for that. So it just every touch that we put in there, we're trying to put in there so we can kind of keep the communication going. And it's it's been, I can't, everyone used to say that. I'm telling you, I heard, I heard it for years. People saying, do your CRM, do your CRM. And I never did it. And it's it's making a world of difference. So you didn't you didn't always use a CRM. No. I mean, it's something new. No, I would I, I have every client or every person that's ever come through an open house on my phone. Um, and I just would think of that person. I have, a, I have a weird memory like that. So I would, I can remember which person I saw at which place. And, and then I was like, oh, there's another property coming up that, you know, I met you at this property. It's very similar to this one. Would you be interested? I need to, I needed to put those people in CRMs. My poor phone has like 7,000 contacts. Awesome. Thank you. That seems to be a recurring theme as well. So being a successful agent is having a great CRM that um, helps you uh, keep in touch with your with your clients and your sphere. So and you know what else though I think is is vendors. I mean you, you need to have those go to people. I mean and I mean I have three go to attorneys that I usually recommend. Obviously they're always allowed to use whomever, but like my probably my number one that probably eighty five percent of my clients do my my. Um, my attorney, Seth Kaplan, I mean, he, like just knowing that you make connections to any young agent right now, find good people to help you. So that, that, help, that are, are in the same mind line and, and, and the way that they work, um, you know, the, the, the attorneys with, and, you know, the, I always have four inspectors that are, you know, usually available, you, you know, if it's, if it's contractors, if it's designers, if it's whomever, whatever people need, I love being the person that my like clients will still contact me saying, Hey, you know, do you have a person that does flower pots? I'm like, yep, I sure do. Connect, you know, and just being that connector is so important. So save people. I mean, a lot of mine are, you know, Freddie Roofer, like their, their last name is Roofer. So they're, you know, so I know who I can give, you know, I can search roof and know I have that many roofs, roof contacts in my contacts so I can connect people via text and they really appreciate it. Maybe you can send us all that contact for the flower pots. <laughs> I don't have a flower pot person. Oh, she just, I, it happened from being on Facebook. I literally, I saw a client was showing, you know, a beer, like social distancing in my backyard. And I saw her flower pot behind it. I'm like, where did you get that pot? She was, she was like, my sister has a company. So then I was able to, we did our office uh, flower pots. I had them do it like the next day. And I, you know, just being able to be that connector for a client. And then she was happy, you know, that she helped connect her sister. So it's called Just Pots. Her, the company is Just Pots. It's super cute. Cool. That's awesome. Okay, so um, next question here is, what is something positive that you see resulting from COVID-19 for real estate? I think we just heard a whole lot of them. <laughs> um, you know, I think there's, 
a lot of little wins that have come out of this um, time to spend on your CRM. And, and I, I completely agree with Pam on that, that there's nothing more important than having your database set up and knowing who you're contacting, how you know them, you know, what you've done with them, where you met them, having as much information in there as possible, whether it's, you know, going out and buying one or using your company's one, it doesn't matter. But what matters is that you use one somehow. And a lot of, at least our advisors have gone through and, and really worked hard on their CRMs during this. And we've done a lot of coaching towards that. So that's been a win. Um, I think there's been a lot more communication with clients, um, as John brought up. I think that's a fabulous, uh, good thing. For me, we're um, opening a new shop on the North Shore, so uh, time to get everything organized and opened and ready is uh, certainly a, a huge benefit for, for Engel and Volkers. But um, I think in general, uh, the single greatest positive that came out of this is people really took stock of their lives and their family and what really mattered and really understood the value of home. Mm -hmm. And I think that is going to play out for real estate for a very long time for all of us. Because um, I think people now are looking around and they're not just buying the Pottery Barn house or the um, House Hunters house or the Chip and Joanna Gaines house. I think they're really looking at it as how does this house really work for me and can it be my home? Can I work from home? Can I study, have my kids study from home? Can somebody have a, a, a different space in the house and I don't have to listen to everything they say <laughs> on the phone? Um, and can I, you know, do I love this and would I want to be quarantined in it if this ever happened again? And I think we all saw that meme, but the reality is, um, it's, it is it is true. We're, we all are taking stock of what's uh, important in our homes. And I think that is something that is going to uh, ring very true for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else on that question? Positive in your life, maybe personally or in real estate? I just, I, I like how she said just the importance of home. I think that's great. I mean, people are really seeing the functionality versus just the prettiness and the prettiness. I mean, I'm looking around my own home and seeing how many things are wrong with it. So I, you know, but it's, it's both making sure that there's functionality because I can hear my husband from three floors up. So I've, I'm like, next time I'm going to work on better insulation. <laughs> and maybe more people looking for home offices now that we're all at home so much more. Um, not so the big open space is going to be the number one priority either. I think people are going to like right. rooms. <laughs> <laughs> rooms again, walled. <laughs> so we just have a few more minutes left. I'd like to give our viewers a chance if they have any questions. Um, as Bradley, if we had any come in on Facebook um, in the comment section. Um, You can maybe put those in the chat box and then I can read it off or uh, oh, have okay. We've answered so, everyone's questions. Yes. <laughs> so maybe just okay. Um, um, I don't know how you feel, Brady. I was thinking maybe if everyone just wants to give a final thought of, you know, something really again for our YPN audience. Um, there's not just young people in age in this group, but there's young people in the business. Um, and there's a lot of different factors between COVID and just being new in general. So any last thoughts you want to give to, to our audience? I think this has given us a time to kind of reflect on our business, our personal lives and everything. And I think it's a good opportunity to move forward, streamline everything, do you know, get rid of things you don't need, cherish those things you do need, and just make your life even better and, and really reflect on that. It made us stop for a minute, which I think is a really good thing coming out of this. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's put everything into perspective. I know I've enjoyed this spring actually being home for most meals with my family <laughs> um, and still remaining somewhat busy at work and study. So um, it does, it definitely puts things into perspective. Awesome. I agree. Well, thank you all so much for, for tuning in. Thanks to our panel. You guys are awesome. All of your insight and, and knowledge is so great. Um, to share along with YPN and, and everyone else that was tuning in. 
Um, and thanks again to NASBAR's affiliate sponsors for all your support throughout the year um, and helping make this event possible. Um, you can see all of them at the bottom of the screen. And, and please remember to follow NASBAR on Facebook, North Shore Barrington Association of Realtors, and also on Instagram, NASBAR under slash org. So thank you all again so much. Great thank job, you. everyone. Really appreciate thank you all being here. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.